Have you ever wanted to talk to the dead? Perhaps someone you know is passed and you want the answer to a question you never got to ask them. Or maybe you have a question about your future that's been keeping you up at night. These are all things that the topic of today's discussion claims to allow you to do. These are the supposed abilities allotted to you by a Ouija board. I'm Michael Kratiger. Welcome to Dark Games. The Ouija board is actually a fairly simple device. It consists of a range of characters for whatever language your board is in, in numerical characters from 0 to 9, uh, simple words for responding to yes or no questions, in this case literally yes and no, a word to signify the end of your session, again in my case just the word goodbye, and a way for the supposed spirits you'll be contacting to select characters on the board, in my case a planchette. These symbols can be written on a piece of board of some kind, like they are on the game that I purchased for this video, or they can even be just written out on a piece of paper. The exact origins of the Ouija board are unknown. The earliest known use of anything similar to the board game is in 1100 AD China, with a method of spirit writing called Fuji, or planchette writing. Ouija boards began to become popular here in the States around the 1800s, right after the Civil War. Supposed psychic mediums began using the board, claiming that it would allow survivors of the war to talk to their past loved ones. The actual design of the board that we're all familiar with was patented by Charles Kennard. The name Ouija came from Kennard's sister-in-law, who asked the board to identify itself. Ouija is what the board spelled out, and in the same session the board explained that this word translates to good luck. But enough about the board's history. How do we play? So it's difficult to find actual rules on how to play with the Ouija board. So I'll be giving a general set of rules that people typically agree on. To play, you'll need the board and a planchette. Find a nice flat surface to use the board on such as a table and lightly place two fingers per hand on the planchette. Ask any question you like, be it yes or no or for something more complicated, like a name or a specific word. The planchette should begin to move on its own and give you an answer to your question. Pretty much every source I've found says to never play alone, which is a rule that I will be breaking in this video. I've found that for the best results, the game should be played in the dark, and a candle or two wouldn't hurt either, but from what I've heard, these are not entirely necessary. It's also agreed upon that at the end of the session, you must bring the planchette down to the word goodbye. This ensures that your connection to the spirit realm is severed and you don't have any lingering and unwanted guests in your home. Some precautionary measures are again not playing alone, keeping a clear mind while playing, respecting the dead during your session, and do not let the planchette move across the board in numerical or sequential order, meaning don't let it slide across the board going from 0 to 9 or A to Z. Do not burn the board in an attempt to get rid of it. Keep the board covered while storing and do not store with the planchette on top of the board. Some conflicting information I have found is allowing the planchette to create an infinity or figure 8 symbol on the board. Some sources say not to do this, while others claim that this is a way to properly open up discussion using the board. Some sources designate specific times to use the board, while others claim that those are just for the best results, and really you can play at any time of day. I mentioned before that a general consensus is that you shouldn't play alone, but the reason why is a little debated. Some claim that doing so is dangerous, and some claim that you need the life energy of more than just one person in order for the board to work. I will do my best to address all of these in my sessions with the board. Speaking of which, let's get into using it right now. Alright, what's up? Welcome to the floor. So, as I stated before, I'm going to be starting out breaking the number one in the first rule. Uh, don't play alone. I'm in my office. Uh, the lights are turned off. I have two candles lit. I do have a uh, lamp source over here to light the board so you can actually see what I'm, what's happening. But I am alone in my room playing completely by myself. Also, something to clarify, I found uh, online that you're not supposed to read it off of whatever it's pointing to. It's whatever it lands up uh, in a little like viewing area here. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. Two fingers, 
just kind of on the planchette and then we'll begin to ask our questions by the way I'm doing this right in front of a mirror um, which maybe wasn't the best idea because it's kind of freaky but whatever show must go on okay let's start with uh, a classic is there anybody here anybody here who wishes to communicate No? Nobody? Well, it's too bad. Anybody who uh, feels the need to say something, you can use the board right here. You can move the planchette. This is going to be moving it. You can move the planchette. You got like a whole alphabet here and numbers here. I don't know if you speak English. Hopefully you do. But um, got a whole board here. You can move the planchette. You can move the yes or no, whatever you want. Yeah, I'm still getting nothing. Okay, so, uh, as I stated before, one of the conflicting things I found was some people say you're not supposed to move it in like an infinity symbol. Um, and some people say that's something you can do to open up discussion. Um, I'm just gonna say it opens up discussion. It opens up discussion, and uh, try that. Okay. Now, is there anybody in my room right now who wishes to communicate? Resounding nothing. Any fans of the number eight? Maybe we we'll do a couple more for you. Any fans of the number eight there? Yeah, or, or the infinity symbol? You know? Any takers? Yeah, the board's not doing shit. Um, is there any other rules I can break? Um, it's said to respect the dead. Hey, stinky poopoos, move the fucking planchette. Move it, you coward. A lot of good you guys are. Can't even move a stinking planchette. Look. See how easy that is? Can't even do that. Lazy asses. Yeah, I've got nothing. So, nothing happened in my session, but that was just me playing alone. Let's try with someone else. Welcome to my kitchen. We're gonna piss off some spirits. Fuck yeah! <laughs> so, um, this is the uh, with two people segment of this. Uh, I'm over here with my lovely wife. If you'd like to give yourself a little introduction, if you would. Hello! I'm married to this man. Yes, she is! She enables me. So, simple. Uh, you just kind of press two fingers per hand on the planchette and just kind of hover them over there, and if it moves, it moves. Okay. Uh, also, uh, I have read online that it doesn't actually point to what's what it's saying. It's uh, the actual selections made with the center piece. Okay. I didn't know that, but apparently that's a thing. Okay. Also, this is interesting because uh, this comes right after I filmed my solo segment, and just before uh, I came down here to film this, I did this. By the way, just to piss off the spirits, I'm not gonna put it towards goodbye. <laughs> Bing bong, fuck your life. So technically this is part of the same session. All right. 
Is there anybody here who wishes to communicate? Doesn't look like anything so far? No. This is this is just much of the same of my solo solo session. Maybe you didn't piss the ghost off enough? Maybe not. Hey fuckhead! Move the damn thing! Nothing. You got a question or anything? How do you like your tea? <laughs> <laughs> like my men. <laughs> I don't think you can say that on YouTube. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out. Just then, when I didn't think anything was going to happen. Is there anybody here? That's got some shit to get off their chest. The planchette began to move. Uh, are, are you doing that? No. I'm not doing that. What do you mean you're not doing that? I'm not doing that. Okay. Okay, that's a little weird. I didn't, did, did you move it? No! I didn't move it. I, I do not believe you. You had to have I that. did not move that. I did not move that for shit. You you tell me you didn't move. No, why would I do that? I don't want to get a good good view. I don't know. I don't know. That's not my job. That's yours. Eh. Eh. I never quite expected this. Having the planchet move has me questioning all I was so sure about regarding the paranormal. And not only did it move, its answers were intelligent. Uh, so there's someone here who wants to communicate. Uh, were you up there in my office with me while I was doing my solo session? Okay, you've got to be doing. I'm this. not doing that. Eh, 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 I don't like it. It's creepy. It's creepy. I don't like it. Eh, I don't like you. <laughs> you know you're not fooling anyone, right? I'm not doing that. Okay, come on, one more time. Okay, okay. Alright. Were you a particular fan of me slapping the planchet off the board? Okay, you're fucking moving it. No, I'm not! You are fucking moving it. No, I'm not! How would I be able to plan it this way? Come on, you're the one who's asking the questions. <laughs> I don't like you. So, what happens when you use a Ouija board? Well, certainly not what I expected. Is what I would say if I was trying to trick you. I don't like you. I was moving it. I was moving it. <laughs> I was moving. Yeah, of course you were fucking <laughs> Yeah, it's bullshit. It doesn't do anything. You see, one of the things that made me believe the Ouija board was utter nonsense is the rule, don't play alone. You can claim all you want, this is for safety or due to the board needing more life energy, but in my opinion, this is just so the sneakiest among your group can move the planchette and fool everyone into thinking that you're all actually speaking with the dead. And then you can do what I just did, record it, upload it to the internet, and claim that you spoke to spirits and someone somewhere is going to believe it. But what about the people who play alone? Don't record the session for the sake of uploading the footage and get thousands of views and swear that it works. Well, this can be explained with placebo, the power of suggestion, and the idiomotor response. Let's start with the one that I'm sure most people haven't heard of, the idiomotor response. This is a phenomenon in which the human body can subconsciously move even though your intent is to remain perfectly still. The most simple and accessible way to see this phenomenon in action is to hold out your hand and do your best to focus on doing nothing but keeping your hand perfectly still. Most people will find that despite their best efforts, their hand will still jitter and shake and that movement may even get worse the harder you try to focus on keeping it still. 
The power of suggestion comes into play as someone who uses a Ouija board learns how to play. The board is hyped up as this incredibly dangerous tool that allows you to do this taboo action of speaking to those who have passed on. The main two reasons why someone would want to try a Ouija board are you're convinced that it doesn't work and you want to prove it to yourself and others that it doesn't, or you're convinced that it does work and you want to try it for yourself. It's the second group that will likely have some kind of experience with the board. These people tend to be of the religious type and by extension believe in spirits or just believe in the supernatural world in general. You hand this board to these people and claim that it allows you to speak to spirits and more than likely they're going to believe just that. It's the same principle that allows hypnotism to work. That person has to be open to the idea that they can be hypnotized or that they can talk to spirits in order for the experience to work. Which leads us to the last piece of the puzzle, the placebo effect. Simply put, this is the idea that the brain has such a strong influence over the body that simply telling someone that an object or an action will have some kind of effect on them will cause them to experience that very effect, even though that object of action really doesn't do anything at all. Same thing here. You hand someone a board and a planchette, tell them it will allow them to talk to the dead, that person's suggestible mind takes in that information as fact, the placebo effect takes a hold and makes a use of the idiomotor effect to make that person move the planchette without that person realizing that they are indeed the one moving it. And finally, the power of suggestion kicks back in to seal the deal and affirm to that person that no, they are not just involuntarily moving the planchette, but they are actually indeed communicating with the dead. But of course, a much simpler explanation is that anyone who claims to have had an experience with the Ouija board could just be lying. But that is just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you for watching.